All right, hello, welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast. As we continue through the Word of God, we're still in the book of Matthew. We're picking up today at the 25th chapter of this Gospel of the Kingdom. So as you grab your Bibles, we'll open up in a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get going. So Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to uh, just go through your word, God, and we just pray your blessing over it. And then this study be a blessing to each and every listener. We pray it in Jesus' name, of course. Amen. So again, we're picking up at uh, chapter 25 here and continuing along now as the Lord is continuing to emphasize the importance of being ready for his return, no matter when you think that return is. So at Matthew 25 and 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Now, this first parable is going to be about making sure uh, that you're prepared for his return. And, and, and then he's going to give us one after that that tells us what to do until he returns. Uh, this is the uh, the infamous parable about the ten virgins. Uh, and now, you know, these virgins or young women are part of a, a bridal party. When the bride and the bridegroom uh, were to be married, the groom would uh, come and get the bride and the members of the bridal party, the, these virgins. And then he would lead them in a procession to the wedding uh, and the dinner party. Now, the, the, this group of young women, these virgins, didn't know exactly when the groom would come or what time or anything. Uh, and, and, and this parable tells us that this, this wedding party of, of bridesmaids, I guess we would call them today, there were 10 of them and five were wise and five uh, were foolish. Well, why were they wise and why were they foolish? Well, let's see. Uh, verse 3 says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now you see the wise were prepared. Uh, the, these, these types of lamps that we're dealing with needed oil in them for the wick to burn. And these wise young ladies, uh, they packed some oil. <laughs> I mean, that was a smart thing to do just in case the groom came at night, right? Uh, you would need some light. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, uh, the, the, the lamp is of no use really without oil. And so it would be like today, if you grabbed a flashlight and saying, you know, I, I, you know, I, I need some batteries uh, for this flashlight. Wouldn't it be dumb to be happy to have a flashlight with no batteries? <laughs> yes, it, that, that would be pretty stupid. And so that's what our foolish, uh, virgins do here. They have the vessel. Uh, they have a vessel here that is uh, good for light, but they have no oil. They're just happy to keep, to be carrying around something that looks like it has power, but doesn't have any. Now, that's pretty foolish. And there's people today who walk around looking like they got something, <laughs> sound like they got something, carrying a big Bible under your arm or scriptures tattooed to your forearm, uh, uh, but just an empty vessel, no oil. And oil, friends, is a symbol that represents the Holy Spirit. There are a few symbols that represent the Holy Spirit. There's fire, there's water, but oil is the one, uh, oil is probably the better known of them all. Now, 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 in order to understand that, you have to ask, who is the Holy Spirit? Now, notice I said, who is the Holy Spirit? My mama taught me that the Holy Spirit is a who. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is God, according to Acts chapter 5. And the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power. Now, we have an example here at uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 16, verses thir verse 13, where the Holy Spirit and oil are interconnected. It said, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, talking about David now, in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. You see, when Samuel is anointing David to be king, he uses the oil, and the oil uh, anointing David is associated uh, with and, the, and is immediately followed by the coming uh, of the Holy Spirit. So uh, the Spirit comes upon David to empower him to do the Lord's work. And by the way, you need him. 
<laughs> you need the Holy Spirit to do God's work. Uh, some now, now some teach that you can be saved and then you seek after the Holy Spirit afterward, and like He is, you know, a second gift after salvation. Well, I've, I've, you know, I know really good people who teach that, and folks that I uh, uh, associate with and, and even love uh, who teach that. But unfortunately, uh, I have to tell them the Bible doesn't teach that. <laughs> The Bible says that uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, we'll read that here. It says here at 12 and 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into uh, one Spirit. It says at Romans 8 and 9, let's go there and read. Uh, yes, here it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see, so we are all who are saved. We are all who know uh, God is our, sa Jesus is our savior and called ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit with us and in us. But there's also now a filling of the Holy Spirit. And we see in the book of Acts, the apostles were filled on the day of Pentecost with the Holy Spirit, but they were also filled again several times. And sometimes you need a refill. <laughs> you need them to fill you again. We seek that every day, friends. He'll fill you to help you do his work and to live this life. You need him, friends. And that's the problem in this parable. You've got these five wise who knew they needed oil and five fools that thought they could get by without it. <laughs> and since you need the oil of the Holy Spirit to be saved, I'd say these five fools represent those that are unsaved. They're with the believers. They're in the right place. They have on the right garments. Uh, 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 they look like the, 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 the wise virgins, that, but they appear only, they only appear to be wise. They appear to be waiting just like the wise folks, but they are not ready because they have no oil. Now, verse four says, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered, uh, uh, slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. Go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went to in with him to the marriage, and the door uh, was shut. They thought they would have time to get ready. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, they, they didn't have time like they thought. I, I know that 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 people talk about deathbed confessions being possible, and you know, and 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 those can be genuine, and and and, and they can be, but that's not a plan for hence. You don't know if there will even be a deathbed. Today is the day of salvation. This is today. This is the day to get the oil of the Holy Ghost, friends, in your life. Look at what it says here. It says that while they went to buy, they thought they could get ready at the last minute. They thought they'd have time. The bridegroom came, took them that were ready, and shut the door. Now, they would shut the door at these weddings uh, to make sure that only the right folks would get in. No uninvited guests would be allowed into the wedding, uh, uh, the wedding party. And so the door was shut. They thought that they had time. And if you can, uh, if you're a student of scripture, you also see a picture here of the rapture of Christ's church. He has told us to be ready. Jesus is coming in a day and an hour that we know not. We read that in the last chapter. And so he's coming to rapture his church. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am there, ye may be also. That's the picture here. That's the Jewish wedding. When a man was betrothed to a woman, he would go uh, to his father's land and begin to build a home for his new family.
And then he would return to collect his bride at an hour and a day when she didn't know. It would be the father who would decide uh, 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 when that the son was ready, when that the, 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 the place on his property was completed, and he would send the son to go get his bride. And so the, the, the son would go to get the bride at, a, at an hour that she didn't know, and they would be, they would, he would take his bride and their party into the wedding ceremony at that time. And that's the picture we have here. And so the point is, you have to be ready. You have to know, and you have to know that Jesus is going to return and he's coming for his church at any time. And you won't have time to get ready (laughs) when he comes. You have to be ready. And the way to be ready is to live your life following the leading of the Holy Spirit, my friends. He is our friend. He is our comforter. Listen to Jesus at, 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 at John 16 and 13, talking to his disciples. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. The Holy Spirit has come to lead us into truth, to show us how to live, to show us how to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Oh, friends, don't be foolish. (laughs) Take Jesus into your heart today and then be led by the spirit of the living God and be filled by the spirit of God to do the work of God. We thank you so much for joining us and we pray that you'll join us again next time. Until then, God bless you.